working in confined spaces Qatar gas, forced ventilation and extraction. Ventilation of confined spaces is the most effective means of controlling and eliminating atmospheric hazards. Therefore, all confined spaces require ventilation in some form. Ventilation can be achieved through natural or mechanical means. Confined spaces are so variable in design that there are not set rules for ventilation. The following elements will be taken into consideration when determining the ventilation requirements for confined space work. The work to be conducted, will it introduce additional atmospheric contaminants, welding, cleaning, abrasive blasting, painting? Internal obstructions that will affect the airflow, such as baffles, piping and dead legs. Are the contaminants contained within the confined space, absorbed in the surfaces and will be released during heating? Has all the contaminants been removed? Existing openings can be used in the ventilation by creating additional openings for air to circulate, or more opening to force ventilation into the space. The following will be observed. Contamination from external sources such as exhausts, vents, combustion engines, air intakes must be located away from these contamination sources. Natural drafts will be used to assist in ventilation, set up air flows to take advantage. Vented contaminants will be exhausted downwind from the confined space and from people working in the area. Ventilation will take into account the internal temperature of the confined space. Consideration will be given to the work that is to be performed within the confined space and whether this will add to the internal temperature. Where work is to be conducted in an area containing flammable gases, ventilation ducts must be earthed to prevent the accumulation of static electricity. Mechanical ventilation will be used where natural draft is insufficient to provide a fresh supply of air to the confined space and remove contaminants from the atmosphere. For general ventilation of a confined space, fresh air will be supplied by means of a forced draft fan, or air blower. Plant air will not be used to supply ventilation air to a confined space. Where a task generates atmospheric contaminants such as welding or cutting, Local exhaust ventilation will be used to remove these contaminants. Any air hoses, leads or other devices used to supply ventilation air will be tagged to indicate that these devices are not to be removed. Temperature monitoring. Ventilation to control temperature may be required throughout the time of entry and will form a component of the risk assessment. Subcontractors will as part of their risk assessments, provide details of the mechanisms to be put in place to control the temperature within a confined space and minimize personal exposure to heat stress. In preventing heat stress situation job rotation may be used to ensure adequate breaks from heat stress conditions. Local monitoring will also be considered. No confined space entry is allowed if the heat index of the confined space is 54 degrees Celsius. Electrical equipment inside a confined space. If electrical equipment must be used, the following precautions are to be taken. 24V lighting is to be used. Electrical tools and equipment will be connected through a residual current device, RCD, located outside the confined space. All leads that must enter vessels and tanks will be routed through a protective nozzle or covered with a protective shroud to prevent damage to the outer sheath of cables. Wherever possible, all leads, cables, hoses etc. will be routed through openings separate from those used for entry by personnel, and maintained clear of any water. All electrical equipment will be shut down when the confined space is not attended, such as crew brakes etc. The cables will be located, suspended or guarded to minimize accidental damage. All electrical equipment and leads, including lighting, will be heavy-duty type and tagged with the current color code inspection tag. Equipment will be inspected for cracks, cuts and breaks in insulation before use and where there is any doubt of safe condition, they will be checked by an authorized licensed person and faults rectified before use. All welding equipment and leads will be inspected for cracks, cuts and breaks in insulation, 
Where there is any doubt of safe condition they will be checked by an authorized licensed person and faults rectified before use. Double insulated tools will be used. Isolation, shutdown switches for all equipment will be readily accessible to the outside entry attendant. Only electrical welders fitted with voltage reduction devices, VRD, will be used. Gas cutting and burning. Compressed gas cylinders, other than those used as part of a breathing apparatus, will not be taken into a confined space. Gas cutting equipment will be inspected and leak tested prior to the introduction of hand pieces and hoses into a confined space. All gas cutting and burning equipment will be shut down at the cylinders and removed when the confined space is not attended or when not in use, such as crew brakes etc. All gas cutting and burning equipment will be fitted with flashback arresters at both the handpiece and regulators for oxygen and fuel gas. Simultaneous, SIMOPS, construction activities. Where the risk assessment identifies the potential for simultaneous construction activities to have an impact on a confined space entry, the requesting subcontractor will inform the permit issuing authority who will liaise with the various subcontractors to mitigate any potential hazard or risk prior to issuing a permit. Display of permit. The CSE permit will be placed in a weatherproof work pack information box, poach at all designated confined space entry points. All SHAS information including WMSs, JSAs, etc. will be kept in the box. The entry supervisor will be responsible for verifying the currency of the documentation and discussing the contents at each morning's crew task instruction. Record keeping. CSE permit, entry exit logs, and documentation relating to the confined space will be retained by the subcontractor and be readily available to the CTJV on request. Workplace Inspection Whenever persons are working in a confined space, regular visits by the confined space entry supervisor or other nominated and responsible persons must be made. They will inspect and ensure that the requirements of the permit are being complied with and that SITES requirements are being maintained. Isolations In order to prevent the possible inflow of hazardous substances or the release of stored energy into the confined space, isolations must be applied to all direct connections to the confined space and also to the indirect connections which could arise through leaks from vessel jackets, cooling or heating coils overflow inlets, gravity feed, etc. The insertion of fully rated spades into all pipeline connections, or the removal of spool pieces and the blanking of the piping open end will be undertaken. Wherever possible, the following will be installed. Spades inserted at the flange closest to the vessel. All drain connections to atmosphere be blanked and all level, instrument tapping spades removed. Insertion of inflatable dams into inflow and outflow lines. CTJV will ensure that suitable blinds and, or spades, are made available as part of mechanical isolation means for work in confined space where needed. A positive isolation in terms of mechanical isolation is either a spade, blind or disconnection. A double block and bleed or single valve isolation will be supported by risk assessment and require company approval. Prior to entry into confined space, the equipment will be positively isolated from all potential energy sources. In case of mechanical isolation of the confined space and disconnection is used as isolation means, the nozzle side of the confined space will be isolated by suitable means if the space between the pipes is 300 mm or less, or it is possible for liquid, gas or particles to enter the confined space between open ends of the pipe. All electrical power that may affect safe entry must be isolated. Any source of ionizing radiation, instruments etc., must be shielded at source.